Divers Sink is a weekly netcast where we talk about the world of scuba diving, fantastic diving opportunities, and some of the happenings in the underwater world. We also provide tips and discussions about scuba diving and get excited about upcoming dives and adventures. Learn how you can join us on our dives and become part of the program by following Divers Sync on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram, or by visiting our website at www.diversync.com. Hello and welcome to Diver Sync, the netcast and podcast for scuba divers. My name is Rich Sinewick and you're listening to episode 521 recorded in April of 2024. And uh, I'm going to try to do a couple of different episodes this week and make sure that they all are under a certain time. So we'll try to divide it out because I've had nothing but good news. I've been doing really well as far as being busy at the dive center. And I have been diving quite a bit, and I have not had a whole lot of time for podcasting because I'm trying to do a bunch of different things on social media. So if you're following me on social media, especially if you're following me in Patreon, you've seen a lot of stuff that has been going on, and you've seen a lot of what I've been trying as far as little experimentations and things like that. So I'm, I'm having as much fun as I can to be able to get everything done, but the... Uh, the, the, the problem with being a little bit successful is that sometimes it takes up a lot more time than you want it to, and sometimes it becomes a machine that's a little bit bigger than what you want. So I'm rushing to get a bunch of stuff done because we have some cool things that have happened in the past, but they were coming up. So take you back to March of uh, 2024, and... Uh, what we did was we were able to open White Star Quarry early. And, and, and for those of you that are just tuning in, um, I own two dive centers. Um, it is uh, Divers Incorporated in Ann Arbor, Michigan. And I run White Star Quarry, which is in Gibsonburg, Ohio. And with my tongue firmly planted in my cheek, White Star Quarry is a resort. It is a paddy resort. And it's where people come to learn how to dive. And when we can open early because weather is inclemently warm, and really good, I get excited because it gives us an extra month of diving. Well, I'm going to tell you the weather does not know what to do. And with diving, I have noticed in the 20 some odd years that I've been doing this, it's pretty amazing how cyclical diving can be. First thing is, is that with diving in the springtime, Everyone who is not a diving family, meaning that we have a husband or a wife or a boyfriend or girlfriend who doesn't dive as much as the other one, one of them is really into it and one of them might only be a vacation person, the same thing happens every year. We have to start on the first really nice weekend. And so sometimes that first really nice, nice weekend is in February, which makes a great year for me. Sometimes the really nice weekend doesn't come till March. Well, this year, the first nice weekend we got was towards the end of March. And with the nice weekend, the first one, everybody goes out to their garage and goes, wow, I got to clean out my garage. And so that's the first weekend blown. The second weekend, they say, well, man, I should go diving. And then they have a list of honeydews because they cleaned out the garage. And the reason they cleaned out the garage is because their lawn started looking like it needed to be cut. And so now the lawn started to need to be cut. And that pretty much goes into let's go ahead and spread mulch and let's go do the dive later. And then the third weekend, it's really nice. Everybody comes out and says, OK, time to pull out the dive gear. And they realize they didn't rinse it really well the last time they went. And it was in salt water during their winter vacation. And they completely screwed up their gear and now they have to go wait a couple weeks for us to get it done or rent gear which most people don't want which is why I really like when March opens up because then the water is warm by the time the third weekend rolls around well the problem is we haven't had a really third weekend yet and so we're still waiting for the water to get above 50 degrees which it kind of did I think last week somebody else posted that it did get up above 30 above 50 degrees and that usually starts bringing out the people that are wanting to jump in early the people who are taking care of their, their their early bird students who wanted to get away for spring break. So that's kind of the way that things are going for me is I have had to try to rush a little bit early. Now, 
The other thing that get rushed is we had, and I'll talk about this in the next episode, but we had a um, trip planned early in the season, and it is a copy of what we do in Munising, except it's at White Star Quarry. So it was all called our Eclipse Camping Weekend. And what we did was we went out and we did an Eclipse Weekend, and I'll tell you a little bit about that because it was spectacular. But that was part of what I had to get going. So... A month early, I had to get the compressors up and running. I had to change all the filters. I had to buy a whole bunch of stuff with no money because we're on the end of our our slow season and it starts picking back up. And now we uh, we we have to get all the stuff ready for the quarry to be able to go. Now here's another rub: is that in the in, next week I'm going to be in Truck Lagoon, and this is the last of the 2020. COVID casualties. And I'll talk about this in another episode because I'm going to try to make three episodes today. So I'm going to keep them under um, 30 to 20 to 30 minutes a piece, but I have hours worth of cool stuff to talk about. So what we did though in March was that in all of this, in the opening early, then having to get everything together and then having to get everything going, we had a trip to Utila. Now, Utila, Honduras is a little itty-bitty island off the coast of, of Honduras. It, if you know of Roatan, it is a little bit smaller island than Roatan that sits um, about an hour boat ride from Roatan. And for the last couple of years, we've been going now since we the only um, since 2019, we missed COVID year, but then we did 21, 22, 23, and now 24. And what we've been able to do is we've been able to turn that into a rebreather friendly place and we've been able to make it something pretty darn spectacular throughout our entire um, history with them. It's a very small lodge. We use Utila Lodge and the Bay Island College of Diving and the um, Utila Lodge is something I went out there in 2019 in the fall and we were using another um, resort at the time But 2019 in the fall, what we did was um, I went out there and taught them open circuit Trimix instructor and and Trimix. So I I realized that they had everything we needed for rebreather diving, except for the Sorb. And so we shipped down Sorb. They bought tanks. And so the last four years, we've been able to go down there and do rebreather diving along with open circuit diving. But it's an only the, 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 the lodge is only eight rooms. So we have very small groups. They give us our own dive master and our own boat. And we very rarely have other people on the boat, which isn't bad if we do. But it's been really an awesome time every time. The food is incredible. I gained so much weight. Um, and it's it's basically homemade um, Honduran food. And it is just some of the best um, diving on the planet and also some of the best hospitality you could ever hope for. But with... Um, With lately what I've done, because this one I take my whole family, so I have to deal with four um, airfares and four of the the ways that we do things. And so what we try to do is we try to do it the most economical way possible. Now, if you're like me, we have been able to find that there's some economy-minded airfares that we're able to do without jumping off of, of Spirit. Now, I'm a big fan of Delta. I'm a big fan of, of anything other than Spirit or JetBlue because it costs the same. It just seems like it's cheap. Now, if you're carrying on, Spirit is really cheap. But if you are actually checking baggage or you actually have something that you have to carry on, I guess they charge for carry-ons now, that it comes out to be a wash with Delta. And, and um, so we were on Delta, but we found out that Delta – when you fly out of Cleveland tends to be a lot cheaper than when you fly out of Detroit, which doesn't make any sense because Delta's hub is in Detroit. So like, like we went to Cabo San Lucas for, for a thing last year. And I may have talked about this already, but it was the flight nonstop out of Detroit was like $900. And then the flight out of um, Cleveland was like, it was one stop in Detroit on the same flight for about half that. So what we did was we found a really good flight and then we found out we could get really good tickets if we left a few days early and went into Roatan. It was enough money saved to be able to justify the hotel to stay in Roatan three days on one side and four days on the other. But it was still 15 days out of the the store, um, 14 days out of the store for me, which is rough, but 
I was able to get a lot of my social media stuff done. And, and it, it's office days for me when we were in Roatan. We were basically sitting at the pool or enjoying ourselves. It was a little bit chilly for that, but it was it was just awesome. But when you're trying to be up against time, not being around your own home, not being around your own office, not being around the studio that I use in my office to be able to get things working, things get set to the side. And that's where this podcast has ended up, is it set, got set aside. But Roatan was um, really fun. And it, it's just, it's a neat thing in that, that the only thing bad about it is we only had one restaurant to basically go to because we didn't rent a car there. And so, but we walked around the marketplace and, and it's a neat little village. I think I'd like to do a trip there someday. Um, the island's bigger than I thought and it, and it did do a good job. Um, the ferry ride was fun over to Utila too. That worked out really well. The taxis were great. Um, and then Utila itself, I'm going to tell you. We had six days of spectacular weather, and the seventh day was just a little bit windy. And the people are just great. I, Some of my best friends are there um, that work there. Some of the best friends that I'll ever have in this industry were there that week. And and Rebecca and, and Nick and, and Stephen and, and Jose and, and everybody that's on the, uh, the island for us are just wonderful people and it's always something I really get more relaxed when I know things are going to go well and when I say I know things are going to go well when I go to a place over and over again there are people that say Rich don't you want to try something new well we do try stuff new from time to time but it's never as relaxing as when I am able to do something that I have dialed in so you don't have to leave the resort in Utila if you don't want to. You don't have to worry about going out and trying to find a restaurant. You don't have to try to get everybody to, to together. Um, this trip on this particular one, out of the eight people that went, we had six that were repeats. And that just makes it so much better because when we have, I mean, not that the new people were any, I mean, they were wonderful. And hopefully there'll be repeats next year. But man, we had a good time. And um, I was able to shoot a whole lot of video. I was able to work out some kinks with my, my camera system. I had a new lighting system I was able to work out the kinks for. Um, the rebreather stuff went great. And, and the group and the crew and the dives were just amazing. And um, the food was, was uh, uh, I was hoping for more fish. But other than that, everything else was great. Um, I'm on a uh, I'm on a different kind of a diet now to try to lose some weight. And uh, you guys, for, I've been struggling with that for 10 years. We used to have the Fat Diver Challenge. So I'm just trying not to be a fat diver. I'm down a while, but I'm trying not to be. But so, but Utila, um, we, we, we basically, the family flew into Roatan. We hopped in a taxi, went to the hotel, hopped in a taxi, came back to the boat, Hop, took the boat to Roatan or from Roatan to Utila, spent a week in Utila, wonderful week in Utila. We were trying, actually, um, I could have stayed in Utila because they didn't have hardly anybody. For, they had rooms available for the next week. And uh, it didn't work out with the hotel because we pre-booked everything to save some money. But um, next year, I'll know better to ask. But then we took the ferry back to Roatan, spent three or four days in Roatan, and then we hopped in the plane and came home. And my staff is wonderful. I have really good people and, and uh, everything was taken care of. We had really good internet connection. I'm going to tell you the fact that there's Wi-Fi on the plane makes my life a whole lot easier. I, I tend to try to stay connected with my clients and the people that ask questions just because if I can help somebody, I'd rather be your long distance dive center. And I've gotten a lot of people that for the lo long time have been telling me, that I do a better job than their local dive center, that, that if I was local, they would be my customer. And I appreciate that support. So speaking of support, we do have um, ways that you can support us. The biggest thing is we are on every social media platform. So if you are on, if we, we are not on your favorite social media platform, we will soon be. And it I am segueing my social media for you guys that have been following divers sync for years i'll still have the stuff there but i also ask that you follow divers incorporated my dive shop and i'm going to be doing stuff on both the podcast is going to kind of remain on divers sync's youtube page i'm going to be doing some more snippets some more 
behind the scenes stuff. Um, the video podcast is probably never going to happen. Um, even though I have been recording a lot of this, I think what's going to happen more is it's going to be snippets of this podcast being used as social media stuff for TikTok and, and that. So um, I, I've put it out there to my Patreon people, and I do appreciate your support, guys. It's a, I, I am on Patreon. Um, you get some extras there. Um, you get a lot of video extras. You get a lot of my ideas pop up. And so when you have um, when we have things like that, we uh, I put it out there, and I appreciate um, all the people that, that come back and, and, and private message me as well with things they'd like to see changed in that. But I am on TikTok. I am on Twitter. I am on Instagram. I am on LinkedIn. Um, I'm looking at being on Twitch so that we can put some stuff live uh, when time comes because we're, we're rebuilding a, um, our classroom. We haven't been using our classroom as much at Divers Incorporated because since covid um, we've only had a couple of in-person stuff, mostly IDCs and, and, and um, dive master stuff and that sort of thing. But the in-person stuff, I think, um, needs to be televised and uh, to people at least um, that have come back. For those of you guys, and shout out in any of the social medias, shout out on, on YouTube if you are a original talk shoe person, um, because that was when it was a lot of fun to do this. The technology was really new, and I think that technology with Twitch and Twitter and Facebook Live and the things that I haven't really delved into yet um, are going to be the future of diving, a fu- or future of diving podcast anyway. And man, there's a lot of them out there now. So, so I mean, the favorites are still there as far as I know. There were four of us when we first started. Now there's hundreds. And, and uh, it's always fun and inspirational to be able to see what other people have done, even though I may not have stayed in it the way I should have during 2020. I'm happy to have a business and I'm happy to be around. So um, so that is uh, what happened in March. And uh, we're just going to keep this as the March 2024 episode. Um, as we got towards the end of March, I, uh, I had people that wanted to start doing uh, Tech 40 and and some some cool stuff like that and being able to do weekday stuff and weekend stuff is is all over and uh, i'm going to talk about that um in 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 just a bit and uh, until next time um I'm, i mean it's going to be soon so we'll see ya divers sync is a cooperation between divers incorporated and divers media group you can download archived past editions worldwide over the internet at diversync.com if you wish to support divers sync financially you can find us on Patreon for bonus content, announcements of live performances, product giveaways, and other opportunities to be part of the program. Help us promote our netcast by telling your friends and dive buddies to subscribe to Divers Sync on YouTube and Spotify. The opinions that you hear on Divers Sync are not necessarily those of any station, website, network, or advertiser. These netcasts are not intended to substitute for professional diver training. Scuba diving does involve risk and should never be attempted without the proper instructions, supervision, and training. Have any questions or comments? We'd love to hear from you. We are on Facebook and Instagram for messages, or you can email us via our website at diversync.com.